So here we are for another health update video and I brought out the poo emoji because I had surgery again and so, you know, it feels only right to be doing it in this location. Also, I can't stand up for long periods of time because that hurts. And sharing my experiences and talking about them on YouTube and on social media and stuff is very much a part of my healing process. So this is for me. <laughs> Where do I even begin? Basically, I was doing so well. I was almost five months post-surgery. I was like out and about. I was living my best life. I went traveling. I still wasn't fully physically recovered. Like I couldn't run, I couldn't jump, but I wasn't using my walking stick anymore. And for want of a better word, I was normal. And then shit hit the fan or quite the opposite. There was no shit and a lot of pain. This blue notebook has become like my medical book where everything from being in hospital has been like written down. I basically wrote down like what happened on each day whilst I was in hospital because I knew I was like so out of it and so in pain and so drugged up that like I wouldn't remember and I wanted to like know how things went because I don't have that from last time. Like I can't remember like which days what tubes got put in and got pulled out because these tiny details are all very important or well, they become so important. So on Monday the 11th of June around 4am I woke up with extreme abdominal pain. I wasn't super concerned at first because around the like three month mark, two three month mark post surgery I would be waking up in the middle of the night with pains but I, what I think those pains were were like my muscles and like the nerve endings like healing and everything like coming back together and it was like wound pain and I would just like breathe through it and I'd be able to go back to sleep but I hadn't had one of those like wound healy night pains in ages but the pain wasn't going away and then I kind of realized that it wasn't a muscle pain it was like an internal uh, digestive pain. I'd read about this potentially happening and it could be a blockage from something I'd eaten or um, like my bowel had got kinked or obstructed in some way. Also my stoma wasn't working, like I'd emptied the bag at 1.30 in the morning and then woke up with the pains about 4am and there was just like nothing in the bag and normally I like have a quite high output at night. So I basically just did what the internet told me which is like don't eat, massage like your tummy, have a hot bath. So I was like having a hot bath at like five in the morning and the pains just weren't going and I started vomiting. So that is a bad thing because like nothing is going out the way it should and it's all coming up this way. Not good. 6am me and Dan went to A&E. This was our best A&E experience ever. Would recommend going to A&E if at all at 6am on a Monday. I got seen straight away. Cannula in my arm immediately and they were giving me IV paracetamol which is amazing. I think it's my favourite painkiller. Just paracetamol straight into your veins and fluids because I wasn't eating or drinking um, and I was vomiting so they want to keep you like hydrated and with all those nutrients. Oh and they also were giving me anti-sickness IV as well but the anti-sickness just did, just wasn't working when nothing's coming out that way and you just have to vomit it up. So it was just like lots of vomiting. Then they put an NG tube in me, which I'd had before the last time I was in hospital, basically a tube that they shove up your nose and it goes down into your stomach so that everything that you um, would be throwing up, is just like coming out that way. But for some reason, this NG tube was not working for me and I was just still throwing up. Nothing was coming out of it. It wasn't good. I had x-rays as well that day and they put me on a ward. They gave me this liquid medicine that was like clear, but it becomes a dye. So then when they do scans, they can see the dye like appearing on the scans. I had three shots of that and I say shots, it's because it tasted of aniseed. So it was like having Sambuca shots. They were like, oh, lots of patients don't like the taste of this. And I was like, more. Next day, Tuesday, Tuesday the 12th, I'm just in pain constantly at this point. I've become that like shell person that I was when I was ill last time, just like lying down with my eyes closed, just in pain and then vomiting and just willing the stoma to work, just be like, please just 
do something. I had a CT scan, they took my NG tube out and put a new one in because they were convinced it wasn't working and then that one like worked a little bit better but I was still vomiting. Then the next day, Wednesday the 13th, one day before my five month post-op anniversary, I had emergency surgery. So basically what had happened was I was really unlucky. Everything that happened was just extremely unlikely and I just had bad freaking luck. The first surgery that I had in January was open surgery. When you have open surgery, one of the things that can happen is you get adhesions. I'm not a doctor, <laughs> as you can tell. This is my understanding of things as a patient. So most of the time, adhesions are completely harmless. Like most people who've had surgery will have adhesions and you go about your life and it's absolutely fine. Other times, those adhesions will cause problems. That's when the adhesion um, causes like bowel to stick to bowel or bowel to stick to the other side of like your insides and then that causes like obstructions and kinks in your bowel. And I don't really know how to visually represent this so I'm doing this. So that's what happened. I had adhesions that just caused some obstruction and this can happen a week after surgery, this could happen like years after surgery. For me it happened five months after surgery but again very unlikely I'm very unlucky. What happens most of the time with the NG tube and not eating or drinking and just having fluids, having that aniseed sambuca liquid that helps like push everything through, the stone will start working again and you just leave it 48 hours and you're all good. If nothing is clearing after 48 hours, then they operate. So that's what happened to me. It didn't clear. Doctors were like even putting their fingers in my stoma. Apparently that's a thing. If you can like find a way in, like if the blockage is like near the opening of the stoma, then they like put some tube down it and like, but that didn't happen to me. And when I heard about that, I was just like, I wish. That sounds really satisfying, even though it means like shit goes everywhere. After the surgery, the surgeons did say that they made the right choice because there were a lot of adhesions. And what they do is they just open you up again, cut, cut, cut them away and then sew you back up. Obviously my main concern is I've now just had another open surgery, which means more potential adhesions, more problems. The doctors just kept on saying that I just need to not be in this mindset because just because I've had it once doesn't mean that it's more likely to happen for me again. I just, it's like back to the same probability of like, it's unlikely. But <laughs> when it fricking happens to you and it just comes out of nowhere, you just wake up one morning in extreme pain and then 48 hours later, you're having emergency surgery. It doesn't really bode well for being confident about like, living your life. But let's just like get back to the nitty gritty of what happened. So I was taken to surgery about 12.30 and then I think around 4 p.m. ish I was back on the ward. By this time both of my parents had come to London and obviously Dan was there too. I was obviously completely out of it, or like the anaesthetic and then just like loads of morphine. This time they'd stapled me up. So I had like metal staples, 22 of them. Yesterday I got those staples taken out and thank God, because they were just like causing my skin to get really irritated. There was like pus and it was actually causing me more pain than the actual wound. Yeah, so Wednesday was just like, they just had surgery. I couldn't read things. I had to do that thing, you know, when you're drunk and you have to like cover one eye in order to read stuff. Thursday the 14th, had lots of visits from friends. The NG tube came out, but I was still nilled by mouth. Nilled by mouth means not allowed to eat or drink. They tested my blood sugar and my blood sugar was really low. So they gave me this like pure glucose gel that you just like eat. So I was allowed to eat that. So I was not allowed to eat or drink anything. And I was on a lot of morphine. One of the side effects of morphine is a dry mouth and whew, was my mouth dry. So what they give you, right, is like a stick with a sponge on the end of it and a tray of water. And you're allowed to dip this sponge in the water and like dab it around your mouth. This is luxury when you are nilled by mouth. I was dying for like any kind of flavor. So I got my dad to smuggle in some orange squash to the ward and I asked the surgeon about orange squash in the tray with the sponges and he was just like, as long as I don't see it. So that was glorious. If you've not eaten for like three days and you're 
dip in a orange squash soaked sponge into your mouth. Heaven. Absolute heaven. What happened next? On Friday the 15th, I was allowed to have 30 to 60 mils of liquid per hour. Okay, think about it. 25 mils is a shot. I was allowed like basically two shots. I was having two shots of water every hour hour. That was the most I was allowed. And I wasn't allowed orange squash because it was too, it's too acidic or something. It doesn't work with like the stoma and stuff. But now all of the orange squash. Saturday the 16th, more visits from friends. Had my catheter out. The catheter like pees for you and you just like pee into a bag and it's like up your urethra and you just don't feel the need to go to the toilet and you just go constantly. But I had that taken out on the Saturday, which meant that I had to like start moving and walking to go to the toilet. Luckily the toilet was right next to my bed. I also had my central line taken out. Your central line is a big ass needle that they put into your neck. I don't know if you can see, it had four stitches. This is another thing that they put in whilst you're under. You have all of your like IV drugs and fluids and everything like put into your central line. It's pretty big. When the nurse took it out, she was like, do you want to see? And I was like, yes. And I'm lying there. It's like a needle about this long. It was huge. And that was in my neck. But after you get your central line taken out, you have to lie down for two hours. And whilst I was lying there for two hours, I needed a wee. So the nurse had to come and like bring me a bedpan. Have you ever peed whilst lying down? weird. They took the dressing off my scar and I could see the staples and it was, ugh, didn't like it. And then also on Saturday, I was allowed free fluids. Free fluids basically means I'm allowed any amount of liquid. Even though that sounds glorious, which it was, because I hadn't eaten for ages and because my bowel, you know, had been tampered with and it gets moody, I had to take things real slow. I was like eating so slowly and then like waiting to see how my bowel would react. I forgot to mention, Mona, my stoma, started working pretty much immediately. So after the surgery, the surgeons put on a different kind of bag and in the middle of the night, I said to the nurse, I was like, oh, we should check the stoma bag. And she was like, no, it'll be fine. Like it won't have started working yet. And like, we look and it's like leaked everywhere, which, you know, isn't ideal, but also I was just like, yes, it's working. Bless you, Mona, bless you. On the Sunday, Sunday the 17th, I had my morphine out. I was allowed soft foods. I had an egg mayo sandwich and like some creamy pasta. Yeah, and then Monday the 18th, they let me out. So I've been home for like over a week now. Although by the time you're watching this, it'll be like two weeks. So yeah, that's what happened to me. I'm now like home recovering from surgery. I've got my trusty walking stick. I can't really walk very far or stand up for very long. I cooked dinner the other night, but standing up for that long and cooking, I was wiped out for the rest of the evening. Couldn't move, so good times. Physically, this recovery is so much easier than the last one. I'm already like miles ahead than I was at this time post-surgery last time. This time they kept me in for five days after surgery. Last time I was in for a week and five days after surgery. But that was just because of how ill I was beforehand and having to like properly learn how to walk again. Last time I wasn't eating and I was lying in bed for a month. This time not eating and lying in bed for a week. So still bad but physically this recovery is a lot easier. Mentally, this recovery feels a lot harder. Last time I was just grateful for not being ill and for like having my brain back. And this time I'm just like angry and frustrated and just sad because I'd come so far and it just like feels like I'm just being knocked like right back down again. I don't know, my brain's a mess. But I need to remember that this isn't like getting knocked back to square one because this recovery is so much easier and I'm going to be back to where I was like a lot sooner. It's not gonna take me five months to get back there. Obviously it still sucks. Oh, and the other thing that sucked was that I was in hospital for Dan's birthday. Are you fucking kidding me 2018. If this year hasn't like thrown enough at us as a couple, I got admitted into hospital last time the day after our one year anniversary. So our one year anniversary, I just like was spent in bed, just like, oh, I'm so ill. And now it's like, oh, and it was Dan's birthday and Hannah was getting better and like, ha ha ha, no, you don't get to celebrate that, ha ha ha. Right, I am getting sweaty and I need to open the windows in here. So thanks for watching and your continued support. Really, it does mean a lot and 
Um, thank you for giving me this platform so I can talk about all my shit and heal. I hope that you are all well. I really do. I really hope that you're well and I hope that your loved ones are well. If they're not, that sucks. I'm really sorry. Big hugs to all of us. I'll see you soon. Bye. Thank you.